Once again, the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson cannot get the job done. That and more on today's edition of Locked On NFL. The new Locked On NFL. The madman Tyler Rowland is your double shot of NFL espresso. With the Locked On local experts on every major story. Get ready, Roland is revving up. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Football fans, welcome in to the new Locked On NFL, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with the help of our local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. I am your host, the madman, Tyler Roland, joined today by Locked On NFL expert, the mastermind, Ross Jackson. On today's show, Russell Wilson may be out for the Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend. No more excuses for the Philadelphia Eagles as they play on Friday against the Packers. And once again, on the opening game of the season, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens cannot get the job done. Before we get into that, I do want to thank you for making the Locked On NFL podcast your first listen each and every day. Thank you for being an everydayer here on Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure that you tune in later to the Barber Shop with the one and only Tony Wiggins as he chops up the biggest stories in the NFL and might even have something to say about what I got to say about <laughs> Lamar <feeling>. Jackson. But <laughs> with that being said, Ross knows what's coming here, okay? With that being said, I do want to let you know that today's Football Friday with the Madman and the Mastermind is presented by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL, all lowercase, to win $50 instantly when you pay $5. Once again, Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens, they lose to the Kansas City Chiefs 27 to 20. Ross, obviously a fantastic game, but my thought is. Coming out of it, everybody's singing the praises of Lamar Jackson. And me, I'm like, did everyone watch the same game that I watched? Yes. yes. The toe was out of bounds. <laughs> Kevin Durant style. It didn't count. But he missed a wide open Isaiah Likely a couple of plays before that when Likely went down and was hurt on the ground. He missed Zay Flowers on the play right, right before that. Wide open with nobody next to him. So it's like, I, I don't know. I guess it's one of those things where I feel like all of the running and the plays and the highlights, it's like Madden. It's like what we all wanted to see growing up, a quarterback being able to make those plays. But at the end of the day, he doesn't make the clutch plays. And then because there's a toe on the line, people are going to make excuses for it. I guess my big takeaway is Lamar Jackson wasn't good enough in the clutch despite being good for most of the game. I cannot disagree with you more. Uh, Ravens fans don't listen to this guy, all right? They call him a madman for a reason, all right? Listen, hey. this... You, you you look at the fact that Chris Jones was one on one with Justice Hill on the on the pass that was missed in the end zone. You look at the fact that Zay Flowers go make a play on the ball, dude. Don't just watch it go past you. Like make an effort here. And then he does make the throws. Tyler he made the throw to Isaiah Likely with one toe out. He made the throw to Rashad Bateman down the right sideline to put them in position there in the first place. And if it wasn't for those legs that are pulling the wool over your eyes. They're not in that situation in the first place. He's the only thing that the run game had going. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Right, with listen, that. I can't. I, with that. I, I'm not going to tell you that that's not valid, but let's hear from our guy, Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens and his reaction to this devastating opening loss. The Baltimore Ravens lose a week one thriller to the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm Kevin Ostriker, the host of Locked On Ravens. 27 to 20 was the final. The Chiefs come out on top in a pretty sloppy game filled with mistakes. The referees certainly played a part with those illegal formations as well, but Baltimore just could not get the job done. Kansas City could not take advantage of the Ravens' mistakes. For the most part, the Ravens almost came back because of it, but fall literally a toe short as Isaiah Likely gets a toe out of bounds on what would have been a game tying touchdown. Likely has nine catches for 111 yards and a touchdown. Lamar Jackson goes over 100 yards rushing, but it was not enough. As the Ravens start the season 0-1 and look to head to Week 2 against the Las Vegas Raiders. For more on the Ravens and their Week 1 loss to the Chiefs, be sure to check out the Locked On Ravens podcast and subscribe on YouTube, part of Locked On Podcast Network. All right. Kevin's taking it. Okay. But moving away from the <laughs> Lamar Jackson thing, you make good points. All right? You make good points. I'm going to call you the mastermind. The mastermind, right? <laughs> but the real question is, if a guy scores 60 points, 
but he fouls a three-point shooter down three on the final shot at the buzzer, and the guy makes it and hits the free throw, and they lose by one. Is it his fault they lost? You would probably say no, and I would say yes. But more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, I think this is bad news for the Ravens. I don't want to do week mm. one overreactions to a oh, team. Oh, come on. We could do a little bit. The, the offensive line got worse. The uh -huh. defense that, and the brain true. drain with the coaching staff, some of the pieces that they lost over there. I think that it's fair to say that their roster is worse. I think it's fair to say that their coaching staff is worse. And I think you only get one real shot. The Bengals saw it. The Titans saw it. You get one real shot to knock off Patrick Mahomes. And if you don't take it and you weren't there, it, it's not going to come back to you because he's too consistently good. And I think last year was the Ravens' real shot. So we could talk Lamar all we want. He's still one of the best players in the league. But overall, big picture for the Ravens, I think they missed their shot last year and they didn't get better. They got worse this year. Yeah, I think that's true, especially over on the offensive line. And I think some of the play calling was strange. You also had some of the week one quirks that, out, that come yeah. with, yeah, with like five different uh, uh, illegal formation penalties and things like that, too. I mean, these this is all sloppy week one stuff. But I, I do agree with you that this was your chance here as the Baltimore Ravens to get that one or no start and get that one or no start against a team that you needed to get that one or no start against. You look at the Detroit Lions last year and the way that that propelled their entire season getting that big momentum right out the gate. The Baltimore Ravens are going to have to see the Kansas City Chiefs to get in the playoffs more than likely, and this one's going to sting and linger when they get back to that game. Absolutely. Now, on the Kansas City side, it's just the inevitable. Once again, Patrick yeah. Mahomes gets it done, and we hear from Chris Clark at Locked on Chiefs for that. Kansas City Chiefs are victorious 27-20 to 20 on opening night against the Baltimore Ravens. They won by a toe at the end of the game. Kansas City played a great game. Uh, when you look at the offense and the defense, a lot of what went on in that game, Kansas City just beat themselves at multiple different times. That is something that they got to work on. It is the first week of the season. They will get it figured out. But the big story of the night is Xavier Worthy and his huge contribution to this Chiefs win. A rushing touchdown of 21 yards and a catching touchdown of about 35 yards on a broken play. Uh, gives Kansas City two touchdowns on the night. Rasheed Rice went over 100 yards. This is exactly what I was expecting from the Chiefs. The offense played very well. They beat themselves at times. They have penalties that they need to get taken care of, and they had a couple of drops. But I do think that's something that they'll get worked on. Much more to come tonight on Locked on Chiefs. So I think the Chiefs have some new pieces that they're having mm -hmm. to play on defense. They have some new pieces that they're playing on the offensive line. They got a rookie left tackle. But I think the Chiefs are better, and they're only going to get better because of those things that I just said. So while we talk about the Ravens not being better and regressing a little bit here, I think it's the opposite for the Chiefs. That's my really big takeaway from them. This is a better Kansas City Chiefs team that will three-peat in 2024. I mean, that's just as 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 basic as I can put it. And they did the right thing. They had the right game plan. They had their running backs and their tight ends step in to chip and help out those young tackles, especially the, the rookie tackle that you mentioned over on the left side. You have the additional uh, motion usage, the additional play action uses that makes the game a little bit easier on those guys when available. It, it's exactly what they needed to have. I think you get rid of some of the quirks. I love the high standard there by Chris Clark over at Locked on Chiefs that, hey, this wasn't perfect. This wasn't right. But I, I think that the things that weren't perfect and the things that weren't right are just going to get better moving forward for this team. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot more football action to come in the opening weekend. Russell Wilson might be out for this game. Maybe. We don't know. But if so, big revenge coming for the Steelers in Atlanta. And we get football today on Friday as well. If the Eagles don't win this game, it might be time to press the panic button. We're going to talk about that and more. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users 
don't visit other leading job sites. So if you aren't looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. It's why 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for their hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, Ross, football is back. And as a matter of fact, we have another (laughs) game on Friday between two NFC hopefuls, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. Before we break that down, do want to thank you again for making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every day. It is the new Locked On NFL. Make sure that you tune in later and step into the barber shop with the barber, Tony Wiggins. But again, big game, Eagles. Packers and a lot of this game will have to do with the performance of Jalen Hurts. This is really the contained players for the Packers versus Jalen Hurts. In 2022, Jalen Hurts ran for over 100 yards on the Packers, and most of it was not in the designed run game. Most of it was it's third down or it's second and long. Yep. The Packers are playing man coverage. They're turning their back to the quarterback, and Jalen just takes off. And it's four man rush or whatever it was. And That just can't be what happens in this game if you're the Packers. You can't give this offense free yards because they're too good at the skill positions. They're too good in the run game with Saquon Barkley in this offensive line. We assume, right, the yards before contact. Like DeAndre Swift had some preposterous yards before contact numbers last year. This offensive line, even without Jason Kelsey, um, is, is going to be pretty good, right? So you have the guys on the outside that you know are going to win matchups. You know A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are just going to make some plays. It can't be that everyone's covered and he just took off and made the play. That's Peter Rukowski from Locked On Packers. Make sure to check out your team's crossover Thursday episode for great previews of each game. But I think Peter's spot on. You just can't let Jalen Hurts get out the back door. That is like the most crushing play in the NFL. You got everybody covered. You win the down and then the quarterback makes you pay. But Honestly, the Eagles need Jalen Hurts to make some plays, in my opinion, Ross. Mm-hmm. Like the, the vibes were absolutely terrible at the end of last season, and Philadelphia is a tough, tough market. Jalen Hurts, some people may be feeling a little bit of buyer's remorse <laughs> in Philadelphia. I think if Philadelphia doesn't come out and have a good start to the season, things could unravel quick. Like Nick Sirianni could be one of the guys on the hot seat right away. They're not going to have a lot of patience there in Philadelphia. So I think Peter's right. If they just him Jalen Hurts in and make him win from the pocket, they have a better chance of winning that game. 100%. This is a team right now that's in the midst of a nosedive and everyone's going, pull up, pull up, because they need (laughs) to get the ship rightened as quickly as possible here this season. They got to prove that they're not the team that they finished off last season showing that they were. And that's not easy to do when you have a new coordinator on both sides of the football. You've had an entire offseason. You have injuries. You have all this Mm -hmm. other stuff. Like this game is a humongous stand, like opportunity for the Philadelphia Eagles to say, no, this is who we are. Playing the first ever NFL game ever played in the Southern Hemisphere, and we're making a statement about who we are as a football team. Here's an opportunity for them to do that. And not just in front of the nation's eyes, but the world's eyes in this situation. And of course, if Green Bay can get pressure on the quarterback, and more importantly, Tyler, finish plays at the quarterback, that's going to be the big measure of their success. But if they can't do that, Jalen Hurts is going to get his. Which is funny, too, because Green Bay, there's pressure on that side as well. They make Mm -hmm. the change at defensive coordinator, bring in Jim Halfley, and they're looking at him like he's a savior on the defense. And I've seen (laughs) Peter's hype. Peter has been hyping up the new D.C. all all season, talking about his college clips and everything like that. So the Packers have a lot of pressure to perform on defense. If they don't, and the Eagles cut them up, people in Green Bay, and I know people in Green Bay, Still remember that Colin Kaepernick <laughs> playoff game where he ran for oh, what was it 170, 170 yards or something? Yeah. Him. So if you got a quarterback running all over the field on the Packers' new defense, that's going to trigger some people in Green Bay as well. But it'll be difficult for the Eagles, maybe more difficult is the right way for the Eagles without one of their starting cornerbacks, who, according to our guys over at Locked On Eagles, could be missing this game. Well, we heard yesterday Devin White is out for tomorrow's game against the Green Bay Packers in Brazil. It sounds like Isaiah Rogers 
is also going to be out. Rodgers was slated to be the starting boundary corner opposite Darius Slay in nickel packages with Quinion Mitchell in the slot. Base packages Mitchell would probably be on the outside. Rodgers out, though, with a hand injury. Interesting dilemma now for Vic Fangio. Does he go with Keely Ringo on the outside, keeping Mitchell on the inside? Ringo had a great summer. He was battling with Rodgers for that starting job. Or does Fangio go with Mitchell on the outside and he runs either Avante Maddox or Cooper DeGene the slot with maybe Chauncey Gardner-Johnson playing down as well? It's going to be an interesting decision. For me, I'd put Mitchell on the outside with DeGene or Maddox inside, but I predict it's probably Ringo on the boundary. Interesting dilemma. Ringo has an opportunity to really grab hold of this job with Rodgers out if he does play on the outside. Ross, let me say this bluntly. I don't care what combination mm-hmm. the Eagles use at cornerback. All right, I'm just so sick of this situation where Howie Roseman is so great in every move he makes. How did Howie pull it off? He did it again. How did it? Okay, well, <laughs> everybody was freaking out that he got Cooper DeGene and Quinion Mitchell in this draft. Last draft, everybody was freaking out that he got Keely Ringo and that he got Eli Ricks and all these name players from these big schools. Okay, well, if he's going to get all this credit, if everybody's going to praise Howie Roseman for getting all these players and stealing all these players, well, when these players have to actually play, they better perform. Or why are we giving him so much credit for this? So for me, I I don't really care what combination the Eagles throw out there at cornerback. They better perform or everybody needs to take back all that praise that they gave to Howie Roseman. And the Packers have a good set of wide receivers as well. So it's not like it's going to be easy. Yeah, man, absolutely. Christian Watson, you got Jalen Reed over there. You've got, I mean, Dontavion Wicks is another great one, and he's like the fourth wide receiver on the dang list, of course, as well, with Romeo Dobbs up ahead. So they have that package that should be able to take it to this uh, secondary for the Philadelphia Eagles. And, of course, you had Jordan Love into all that. But you know what really stood out to me in Louis' breakdown, Tyler? The big thing for me uh, with no Devin White and with them having to kind of shift some things going on in Mm -hmm. that slot position – I'm going to prize picks right now, and I'm going more, 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 more on Josh Jacobs' rushing yards. That, to me, is one of the big things that I take away from this. This has always been a small, though athletic and effective, but it's always been a fairly small linebacker core for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. They lose one of their top guys there, although a guy that's been embattled for a little bit, but still one of their top guys. And then now you're shifting one of the guys that's key in run support, which is your slot corner. Yeah, I'm running Josh Jacobs to the ground in this game and I'm taking every (laughs) over every more everything that I can that's relative to Josh Jacobs going into this game yeah absolutely and and you know with Marshawn Lloyd out AJ Dillon out that's even more reason to Mm -hmm. hammer Josh Jacobs in this one and Ross speaking of prize picks today's episode is brought to you by prize picks look prize picks is the most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. It's why it's the number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six players and their stat projection and then watch the winnings roll in. Just some examples. Josh Jacobs, 75 rushing yards. Jordan Love, 225 passing yards. A.J. Brown, five catches. You just pick two to six players and say whether they're going to do more or less. And now you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Also, one Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Download the prize picks app today. Use the code locked on NFL and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code locked on NFL on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks run your game. All right, Ross, we're going to cap off today's locked on NFL again. Football is back, folks. 
and it feels so good. Excited for this game on Friday night as well between the Eagles and Packers that we just discussed. But there are some Sunday games that got even more intriguing here at the end of the week. The Pittsburgh Steelers could be without Russell Wilson. What's going on with the Carolina Panthers and Bryce Young? Before we get into all of that, thanks again for making Locked On NFL the new Locked On NFL. Your first listen each and every day. Remember, I am your host, Tyler Roland, the Madman. I'm going to be here with Ross every single Friday. And then later on today, make sure that you tune in to Tony Wiggins, the barber in the barbershop, chopping up everything. NFL. But looking at the Steelers, we got some crazy injury news. All right. Russell Wilson limited with a calf injury. And if folks recall, he had the calf injury in the preseason And there are some interesting stakes with this game that we'll get into, but let's hear from Chris Carter from Locked On Steelers with what's going on with Russell Wilson. Hey, everyone. Chris Carter here from the Locked On Steelers podcast with a news update here. After Steelers practice on Thursday, Russell Wilson was a limited participant. Mike Tomlin noting this after practice, saying that it was a little bit of calf tightness that forced Russell Wilson to get it it looked at. We will not know if that's going to impact his starting position for the Steelers opener Sunday, 1 p.m. against the Atlanta Falcons. Justin Fields, of course, played a ton in the preseason and a ton in training camp because of a calf injury. So now there's a legitimate question. Who will be the Steelers' starting quarterback for Sunday? It might be a nothing burger. Russell Wilson might practice Friday. But now it puts a lot of emphasis on that Friday Steelers practice report to see whether or not Russell Wilson will be back in a full go or if there's going to be questions going into Sunday if Justin Fields will start the first game for the Steelers at quarterback. We'll keep you up to date with all of that. On the Locked On Steelers podcast, tune in for the Friday episode wherever you get your podcast. All right, Ross, first and foremost, I was a Steelers believer coming into the season. And one of the big reasons <laughs> that I was a Steelers believer and I think the Steelers go to the playoffs is because I think that Russell Wilson and Justin Fields aren't so far apart that if they right. were to lose Russell Wilson or say they went with Justin Fields and then had to go back to Russell Wilson, I don't think it's that big of a difference. I think their offensive line is going to be much improved. I like George Pickens. I wish they had one more option at wide receiver, though. No lie. Yeah, yeah, Calvin sure. Austin yeah, you know, doesn't really do it for me personally. But the defense is obviously good. And you always get the Mike Tomlin bump. So I believed in the Steelers. And I think that they could still win this game, even if Russell Wilson is out. But let's just for a sec- think about the stakes here. Arthur Smith, new offensive Mm -hmm. coordinator for the Steelers. First game of the year back in Atlanta where he was just fired as the head coach. Also, Justin Fields from Atlanta. He was born Mm -hmm. and raised in Georgia, went to Georgia initially in college before going over to the better college in Ohio State. I'm sorry, Georgia fans. Didn't mean to throw that in there. But, (laughs) but. The intrigue of this game, if Justin Fields were to play with Arthur Smith coming back, imagine if the Steelers find a way to win that game, how much of an emotional like boost. You know in the old uh, Mario Kart games where you would hit the little <laughs> uh, the boost ramps and it would explode <laughs> your speed? That's what a win in Atlanta with Justin Fields at quarterback would do for the Steelers emotionally, and I think it would only uh, embolden me to pick the Steelers to make the playoffs. But if Fields is the guy who plays, what are you looking for from the Steelers? I, I think the biggest thing you're looking for is just can you support him and can you keep him upright? Because that was such a big thing in Chicago, right? He's got to kind of work through all of the bad memories of what happened through to happen to him in Chicago before he really gets to be his next best self as an mm-hmm. NFL quarterback in the league. And so Pittsburgh's got to be able to aid that. I, I think that Justin Fields going out there and being the week one quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers could be the worst possible thing to happen to his development if it goes sideways, right? There's a world in which he goes out there and it goes perfectly well. And you know what? Awesome. Awesome for Justin Fields. Awesome for the Pittsburgh Steelers if that happens. But there's a world in which that completely stymies every bit of progress that they made because he's seeing ghosts all over again and things like that. And I'll tell you the other thing that makes this really interesting too is uh, remember Justin Fields, all that talk over the offseason about where Justin Fields is going to end up and Atlanta was a big part of that conversation. So now if he gets the opportunity to go up against Atlanta and say, this is what you missed out on while they're out there with Kirk Cousins, oh, man, what a bittersweet symphony that would be. 
I feel like this entire episode has been talking about like early panic. Like yeah, right. the Eagles could panic, you know what I mean? And now, like, imagine if you're the Falcons, you get the new coaching staff. You feel like we're finally free from Arthur Smith, Bijan, and Drake London and Pitts. They'll all be used correctly now. They add Justin Simmons, like they're adding players on defense late to bolster their team. They're really going for it. And for the guy that they could have traded for and the coach that they fired to come in in Atlanta and beat them, I think there oh, would be boy. some panic button pressing. In Atlanta, whether it would be smart to do that or not, it's a different conversation. But there sure. would definitely be people out there pressing the panic button. Speaking of the panic button, there are some people in Carolina who are ready to press that panic button. The Panthers opened their season on the road in a very difficult environment against the New Orleans Saints. And our guy Julian Council from Locked On Panthers breaks down what the stakes are for the Panthers this year. Most important thing is the Panthers getting the most out of Bryce Young. They fired Frank Reich after 11 games because he was not getting the most out of Bryce Young. They got rid of the rest of that offense coaching staff because of what they were unable to do with Bryce Young. You look at guys like LaVishka Chenault, he's no longer here because he didn't help Bryce Young. Terrace Marshall Jr., same case. DJ Chark, same. All those guys off the line, they're not here because of their failings last year to help Bryce Young. Dave Canales is here to get the football right, as you said. But he's also here because of what he did with Geno and with Baker the last two seasons in Seattle and Tampa Bay, respectively. What he did for them is what David Tepper is wanting him to do for us, for the Panthers, for Bryce Young. So like last season, this season's all about Bryce. You know what stands out to me about this? I'm going to jump in on this because yeah, the, ahead, thing that, the thing that I love, the thing that I love about the Carolina Panthers this offseason and one of the things that makes them, to me, having like one of the most admirable offseasons of all the NFL teams is that they have just simply embraced who they are. They have simply embraced the fact that they are a rebuilding team with a young quarterback that has a lot of question marks and a lot of things to figure out. And they've made this entire offseason about the one thing that is the most important uh, element to their success, and that is their quarterback, the guy that they traded up for, the guy that they went up and got. It was the wrong quarterback. It was the wrong choice. I'll say that over and over again to the cows come home. They should have gone right. C.J. Stroud. But if you're going to believe in your guy, you got to build around him. So what do they do? They give him the head coach. They rebuild the offensive line. They give him the new weapons on offense. They give him a run game that's actually going to be a run game for a change. They do all the things that need to that need to be done. And then they sit back and they say, the only thing that matters in the 2024 season is can we develop Bryce Young? And to me, that is exactly what this team needed to do. And I am all about the Carolina Panthers for saying, here's who we are and here's what we're going to do about it and sticking with that plan. And I, I agree with you. I mean, they spent like $150 million at guard <laughs> because they have right. a quarterback who's not much taller than me, and he needs that fortification on the interior for him mm -hmm. to be able to have success. But here's what I would tell you, Ross. This season may all be about getting answers about Bryce Young, but this is like when you go to the doctor. Sometimes you don't want the answer. Sometimes <laughs> the answer is you're dying. You know what I mean? Right, and right. the Panthers may very well get their answer, and that answer may be, yeah, you guys messed up bad, and this guy isn't the pick. But we're going to find out. That's what makes week one so intriguing, and I'm so, so excited to overreact to all of this <laughs> on Monday. So make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's the new Locked On NFL again. I am your host, the madman, Tyler Rowland, here with my co-host, Ross, ja Ross Jackson, who will be here with me every single Friday. And as a reminder, again, you get a double dose of Locked On NFL now. Make sure that you step into the barber shop with Tony Wiggins, the barber himself, and chop up all things NFL. But that's going to do it for us. Everybody have a safe weekend out there. Get ready for some football on Sunday, baby. We are back.